You ask a lot of questions. First you want to know why I quit drinking, and then you want to know about the scar in my throat. And no, it's not a tracheotomy. It's not a traceotomy. It's not a tracheotomy. Oh, you know what I mean. It's not one of those kind of scars. So, how did I get it? Well, back when I was drinking, I used to hit the bars at night and naturally began to pack on the weight. So I went from beer to light beer. And when that didn't work, I switched to Bloody Mary's. Bloody Mary. I wasn't a sophisticated drinker, which is good. I didn't go to sophisticated bars. So my Mary was pretty simple. Several fingers of vodka, gin, or tequila, plus tomato juice, and a few shots of Worcester. None of this uh, garnish or hippie crap. It was a rather humid evening, and as I sat before the barroom mirror, I'd lost track of how many times I'd sung out to the bartender, Bloody Mary! Bloody Mary! I must have sung out at least seven times, or maybe as many as 13 times. Hey, I had... Uh, Six doubles in a single. That'd make 13 shots. I had my skin on. I, I, I mean, I had a skin on. I was staring at my rather blurry reflection in the mirror above the bar. And then, then suddenly, she was there sitting on the bar stool next to mine and leaning in towards me. I knew she was about to hit on me. Hit on me. For a drink. I was just about to exercise my considerable personal charm and tell her to piss off when I did a double take and forced myself to focus. Focus. This woman wasn't your usual bar fly. In truth, she was drop-dead gorgeous. I know that beauty is often in the eye of the beer holder, but this woman really was lovely. Tall, with a slim, pretty face, the skin pale and flawless, the eyes gray-blue, the hair long, long and blonde. I blinked, and when I opened my eyes again, she was still there, still looking at me. I may have been drunk, but I wasn't that drunk. Let me rephrase that. I may be slow, but I'm not that slow. Now I leaned towards her and said, Can I buy you a... Uh, a drink? She smiled at me and was about to say yes when Karen, Karen the bartender, leaned towards us and said, You're not buying anyone a drink. You need to go home. I always called Karen Babe. Babe, whether she liked it or not. So I said, Come on, Babe. Is this a joke or what? You've had enough for tonight. Seven doubles. Six? No more than six, I'm sure. I think. You need to go home. Come back tomorrow. Okay, okay. But can I at least buy this lady a drink? No. I glanced up into the mirror to make sure my mystery lady was still there and to make sure... She was really real and not a vodka-fueled hallucination. She was still there, 
and to settle all doubts, she spoke to me in a husky, sexy voice. Don't make a scene. We'll go somewhere else. I mustered up as much dignity as I could and left the bar arm in arm. I think she was probably trying to steady me on my feet. Arm in arm with my vision of paradise. As Karen watched us with what? An amused expression on her face? A bemused expression? Concerned? Evil? Out on the street, I said to my vision, What's your name? Then my vision cried, Mary, Mary. Where are we going, Mary? I was hoping she might say, to my place. But instead, she led me to the mouth of a nearby alley, where she said, through here. That took me by surprise. I wondered if she wanted to take me to a dark place to make out, but <laughs> no, <laughs> that couldn't be. This woman looked well off, so perhaps she was slumming. And I was definitely a slum creature still. <laughs> it was probably just a shortcut. But then, halfway down the alley, she stopped walking. We stood in the shadows, facing one another in an alley. It wasn't a bad alley, as alleys go. It didn't really stink, and there wasn't a lot of trash on the ground or overflowing garbage cans. But it was wet underfoot damp, an alley, not the sort of place to make out. I, I didn't get much attention from women. In fact, I was usually pretty desperate. But still, there are limits, eh? Why'd we stop, I said, and I was having trouble speaking. Don't talk, she said, her husky voice almost a growl as she put her arms around me. It, it was the prelude to a kiss. And at that precise moment, a car turned into the far end of the alley. I turned my head to look at it, look at it, just as my vision of loveliness bit into my throat. <sighs> I yanked my head away in shock and surprise as the blood splashed down the front of my shirt. The lights of the approaching car, which was racing down the alley towards us, illuminated the blonde's once lovely face, now caked and covered in gore. With a scream, oh, okay, with a gurgle, I, I lurched from the alley. Behind me, I heard screeching brakes. Then I heard screaming. Screaming, which was suddenly cut off. Blood was pouring down my front, down my shirt, even my pants. As I stumbled down the street, my one thought was to get home. Get home. Put a Band-Aid on it. Get home. Home. So I went back to the bar. I thought Karen was going to vomit when I pushed my way through the front door and staggered over to the bar. For the first time, I remembered thinking how pale she was, how pale her face, her, her skin was. She looked horrified. Maybe she was worried I was going to bleed all over the bar. And then I hit the floor. I don't remember anything of what happened in the immediate aftermath. I only have vague memories of being rushed down a hospital corridor, 
while a metallic voice droned, Code blue, code blue, code something. In the end, I made it. I spent six months in hospital, and I can no longer speak above a whisper. But at least I survived. The other guy didn't. You see, the vehicle which pulled into the alley at the precise moment I was attacked was a security patrol car. I had turned my head to look towards it so my, uh, uh, girlfriend, uh, tore a hole in the side of my neck, not my throat. But she did tear out the throat of the security guard who must have left the patrol car to try to help me. In fact, she tore his head clean off one of my surgeons. My uh, plastic surgeon told me that my injuries and the guard's injuries most closely resembled the injuries from an attack by a grizzly bear. Grizzly bear? Great. Instead of making love to a bare naked lady, I got maimed for life by a bear lady. Mary, Mary has never been found. The cops went to interview Karen as a potential witness, only to find she too had vanished. In fact, the owners of the bar told police that no one named Karen had ever worked there. Was Mary a hallucination? A hallucination? Was Karen? How could that be? Hallucinations don't mix Bloody Marys or tear a hole in the side of your neck. Were they in it together? Partners in crime? Or was Karen a guardian angel who, who tried to stop it, tried to send me home safe? It was only later that I remembered about the ritual, the Bloody Mary ritual. Bloody Mary. Did I summon Bloody Mary by accident? Impossible, right? Right? Well, there is one way to find out. Go find a mirror and... Then call Bloody Mary 13 times and see what happens. I dare you. I double dog dare you to try. Hey, let's do it together. Go, go and get a mirror. Go find a mirror. Got your mirror now? Okay, all together now, on the count of three, one, two, three, Bloody Mary, 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 Bloody Mary. Oh, crap. Uh, hi, Karen. Hi, Mary. The moral of the story? Nothing good ever happens in a bar when, like the song says, you're feeling single and seeing double. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, Werewolves, and the Black Eyed Children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,000 
and 21 subs in 2021. Till midnight. Cheers. Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix Here, that's P X Here, while the music was The Haunting and Mysterious Ghost Story by that patron of the internet, Kevin McLeod. <laughs>